No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide a way out so that you may be able to endure it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Bible abounds with stories of people facing adversity. Challenges so daunting and situations so fanciful that we hardly think they have anything to do with our own lives. For most of us, the adversities we face rarely approach the scope of the sweeping epic narratives of Moses and Deborah, King David and Queen Esther, Paul and Mary Magdalene. And yet no one can doubt that we at times feel as tested as they must have felt to be asked to marshal resources to cope with whatever life throws at us. The fate of an entire nation may not hang in the balance, but the stakes are still high. Perhaps you have asked yourself why God was allowing some terrible thing to happen, like a serious illness, the death of a loved one, or a financial struggle. The notion that God is testing us through adversity often creates more anxiety and confusion than it does comfort. In our darkest moments, this idea may lead us to believe that God is willing us to suffer to teach us a lesson or punish us for some wrong we have committed. It can lead to an understanding of God as callous and sadistic, a heavenly father that in earthly terms would qualify as an abusive parent. Whenever we read Holy Scripture, we are entitled to question how biblical stories fit with our own understandings of God. Whenever we hit a snag or a tragedy in our own lives and try to spy God's hand at work, we may want to ask ourselves, is this what I believe God is like? Throughout the centuries, the Israelites, the early church fathers and mothers, theologians and mystics have all attempted to come to some understanding of who God is and how God works in our lives. And their answers to one of the universe's biggest questions, who is God, have been radically different from each other. Their answers can certainly inform our own, but we're not required to accept them blindly and uncritically. If you don't believe God sits around on his cloud thinking up ways to make human beings suffer while the Holocaust happens, for example, then maybe it's time to challenge your assumptions about how God works. Perhaps God is neither the divine disciplinarian who makes bad things happen to good people, nor the holy concierge who gives us what we want when we ask for it. So then, what do we do with the idea that God tests us, as our reading from 1 Corinthians claims? Moses wrestles with this exact question in the book of Exodus. When he encounters the burning bush on Mount Horeb, we may imagine that God didn't act or look like Moses expected him to. After all, any one of us would expect, as Moses did, that a bush on fire would be consumed by the flames. That's the usual order of things. In this instance, God didn't behave the way human beings expected him to. And this is the first test. God challenges us constantly to rethink what God is like. I would argue that this isn't God playing I've got a secret, but rather God inviting us to explore ever more deeply that mystery of God that resists human understanding. Moses' encounter with the burning bush was a moment of clarity that encouraged him to re-examine what he believed about God. This clarity, though, exposed how little Moses really knew about the Holy One of Israel. So little, in fact, that he realizes he doesn't even know God's name. Yet the conversation between God and Moses on Horeb reveals not only how little the prophet knows about his creator, but how little he knows about himself. 
This is the second test. The story is not about God giving Moses more than he can handle, but about Moses discovering that he is capable of more than he thought. Perhaps this is the point of Paul's statement that no testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. We all tend to underestimate our abilities, our capacity to live fully into the life God knows we can achieve. But we don't know ourselves as well as God does. And so self-knowledge is a key to understanding vocation. Not only is God not what we expect, but very often we are not what we expect either. God's testing is really about learning and growing rather than suffering for its own sake. Today's readings thus emphasize God's role as a spiritual teacher. God begins by divulging what he knows about the Israelites' plight in Egypt as a way of showing that he and Moses have a common framework for discussing Moses' vocation as liberator and leader of the people. In explaining the epic duty that God has carved out for Moses, the teacher coaches the student, rehearsing what he will say and what he will do in this or that scenario. But as conventional as this teacher-student exchange is in many ways, God still manages to challenge Moses' expectations. It's clear from the passage that Moses assumes he has to do all this hard work by himself. As if God were abandoning him in his struggles without any help, encouragement, or advice. Yet God explains to the overwhelmed and unsure prophet that he will be with him as he tries to fulfill his marching orders. God even tells him his name. I am who I am. Again, not at all what Moses was anticipating. Perhaps he was expecting God to say, well, tell them that Sophia or Joshua or Bob sent you. Well, God doesn't always do what we expect. God isn't always who we think God is. What's so interesting about this conversation with Moses is that it's one that God has with humanity over and over again because God is faithful. The challenges we face may be so daunting that we think we don't have the resources to face them. When Paul asserts that God will not let you be tested beyond your strength, it is because only God knows what we're capable of. And because our own strength is amplified when we accept that God is with us and lends his strength to our efforts. Paul assures the Corinthians that with the testing, God will also provide a way out so that you may be able to endure it. That way out is the presence of God that accompanies us in our lives. That doesn't mean we feel no pain or don't hit rock bottom. It means that God is where with us when we do. Scripture often illustrates that the source of much of our testing is just life itself rather than God. But that doesn't mean God is absent or indifferent in our suffering. When we cry and hurt, and of course when we laugh and celebrate, God reaches out to us to share in our experience. We just don't always remember to listen to God's voice, and sometimes we don't know how. The Bible presents story after story of human beings underestimating their strength to endure life's challenges, often because, like Moses, they think they have to go it alone. For example, the prophet Jeremiah shrinks before the overwhelming task set before him. Ah, Lord God, the young prophet laments, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am only a boy. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. And remember that at the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, Mary initially responds to the angel's annunciation of her holy vocation to be the mother of God with disbelief and trepidation. 
Who can blame her? But the angel proclaims that nothing will be impossible with God. And at that moment, Mary responds with her immortal yes. Let it be to me according to your word. In Matthew's gospel, moreover, Jesus' contention that a rich man will find it hard to enter the kingdom of heaven leaves the disciples in a quandary about who then can be saved. To which Jesus replies, for mortals it is impossible, but for God all things are possible. And finally, Paul writes from prison to his friends in Philippi that all of the tribulations, all of the suffering he has had to endure are possible because of God's presence. I can do all things through him who strengthens me, he declares. All of us, like our biblical forebears, have asked God, who am I that you should send me? We have rage, I just can't take any more. We perceive that God is testing us beyond our capacity for reasons we cannot guess or fathom. We try to perceive in our adversity some logical purpose that would make the pain or the grief or the anxiety worth it. But the point of the testing may just be what we learn about ourselves and what we learn about God. What God may give us in the experience is not relief, but an opportunity to choose how to respond to what life throws our way and to learn and grow from it. Perhaps to realize that we are capable of more than we thought and that God is not who we thought God was. It may be that God, Emmanuel, is with us in a different way in our suffering than we had imagined that gives us a way out of human defeat and despair. It may remind us that our Lord, who hung on the cross, has in every way suffered as we have suffered and feels solidarity with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.